Guess who made it to the grand final? The Netherlands! <laughs> I know that I am again very late with this video, but well, here it is anyway. <sighs> that was something, like I almost died. I almost, almost thought we wouldn't make it, but we made it and I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm really am. I should have filmed my reaction because I literally jumped and screamed and woke up my mom. Um, yeah, but you can see what my reaction was on Twitter, like speaks for itself, right? I'm really, really proud and I'm happy with the performance. I, I liked it and I think it deserved. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. But it was such a torture to hear our name as the last qualifier. The last time Waylon participated at Eurovision, he was announced as the ninth qualifier. But this was more intense. From this semi-final, I actually got eight of the ten qualifiers right. So I'm pretty happy with that. The qualifiers that I didn't get right were Poland and Latvia. I actually expect Poland to qualify, but I think it's because of the live performance, like vocally, that wasn't that good. Same counts for Latvia, I think Laura was a bit too nervous, but I still like the performance, so I'm pretty sad about Latvia. I'm also sad about Malta, because I like the performance, I put her on the borderline non-qualifier place. I really like the performance, I really hope that her message came across. I wouldn't have minded if she would have qualified, but unfortunately she didn't. I also didn't expect Serbia to qualify, but I'm happy for them. When the performance started, I was like, whoa, that girl sounds really good. And from then on, I didn't mind if they would qualify, actually. I think it's pretty deserved, but I think the real star of that act was this guy. Like, he's a legend. Seriously. I also voted. Yeah, I did. I didn't vote in any other year. The only other time I've ever voted was at Junior Eurovision 2014. And for the rest of Eurovision, I haven't ever voted. So this year I did. I voted for Norway. I also voted for Romania because my mom liked that song. And I was like, I got you, girl. I'm gonna vote for her. Uh, I also voted for Ukraine because, like, seriously, the performance of Ukraine was amazing. Like, the beginning in the piano. Like, that's so original. I loved it. And I also voted for Australia. Like, seriously. Jessica Maboy was amazing. Personally, I think she was amazing. I really liked the performance. I think she was great. And I'm really, really happy they qualified. <laughs> Okay, so we need to talk about Slovenia. I didn't expect them to qualify. I think the reason, or maybe a big part of the reason why they qualified was because of the part when there were technical issues that was of course staged, like they did that at every rehearsal, it was fake. It kind of reminded me of El Bob's moment when he was silent for 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> when it was silent for 10 seconds. But, of course, it's really smart to use that. A lot of people haven't seen all the rehearsals like the commentators did. It came across as an actual technical issue and they would be like, okay, she had a technical issue, I want her to be able to perform again without technical issues. So that's smart to put it in there because then people also remember it. The audience did clap with her though, so if it would have been an actual technical issue, that would have been great, I think. After this semi-final, Ukraine and Australia are the only two countries that have never failed to qualify. All the other countries have at least one non-qualification. This year a lot of strong countries which have always qualified have not qualified. I mean Azerbaijan, Russia, Romania. So I think that's proving that your vision isn't only about politics anymore. It's also about really focusing on quality and stage performance, not only about what country it is. Because otherwise Russia would have qualified, of course. I do feel really bad for Yulia. I don't know if you see the pictures, but like for example here, you can see that she cries and I don't want her to cry because this was a big dream for her and yeah, you know, it's just so heartbreaking to see her cry. Like this kind of makes me want her to return to your vision with a good song and a good performance because I don't know, I feel bad for her. You know the part they showed with the behind the scenes of the postcard. I think the end of that clip was so beautiful because that was the first time ever that Julia saw the ocean. I think it was beautiful to see that and end that part with that scene. So yeah, I'm pretty happy overall with this semi-final. I'm more happy than the first semi-final. <laughs> so yeah, these were my thoughts after the second semi-final, I guess. Maybe I'm forgetting something again and yeah, too bad for me. <laughs> You can still ask me questions on Twitter with the hashtag AskConvertals. You know what? You can also just ask them in the comments, like whatever. Nobody's asking me things on Twitter, like just ask them in the comments then. And I'll answer them in a video. Maybe in the video of my thoughts after the grand final, maybe a complete other video. We'll see. I need to have enough questions for that. It can be about anything, Eurovision related or not. 
So yeah, tell me what you think of the semi-final. Are you satisfied with the qualifiers or not? Let me know in the comment section below. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. You can also subscribe down below if you want to. And I'll see you tomorrow with my prediction for the grand final. That will be a disaster too because, well, <laughs> last year I didn't have any place right. I only had three places right. And it wasn't even the place for the winner. So <laughs> that's it. I'll see you tomorrow and yeah, bye.